It's AFA Today on AFR Talk, and if you're watching on the AFA channel, the skyline of uh, Manhattan, New York City, where we come to you from the shadow of the Freedom Tower, World Trade Center, every single day. A shot of it there on your screen. Uh, it's It's uh, been a very surreal couple of days uh, here in New York. Uh, this is Sanctity of Human Life uh, week. Uh, Sunday was the observation of that. Uh, you know, the March for Life, uh, Dr. Martin Luther King Day, all kind of uh, always falls in this same window of time, which makes it very strange that then um, the governor of New York State would uh, come out and make the uh, statement that he did yesterday. Kevin McCullough, so glad to have you with us. Uh, our phone number, 888-589-8840, uh, But And I'm reading from the, um, I think this is the uh, Washington Examiner. Uh, but uh, New York Governor Andrew Cuomo, believing that pro-life activists, along with anti-gay activists and supporters of the Second Amendment, are now not welcome in his state. During a radio interview on Friday, Cuomo pointed out that Republicans were in the midst of a schism where conservatives work against mod- mo- moderate Republicans. And he said this in an actual interview to an actual reporter who was actually asking him the question. Take a listen. Uh, their problem is not me and the Democrats. Their problem is themselves. Who are they? Are they these extreme conservatives who are right to life, a pro-assault weapon, anti-gay? Is that who they are? Because if that's who they are, and if they are the extreme conservatives, they have no place in the state of New York. All right, so now a governor... Uh, just randomly saying, uh, if you're pro-life, pro-family, uh, pro-self-defense, if you're uh, pro-individual responsibility, uh, if you're if you're pro uh, all the things that that decent, hardworking, tax-paying, uh, mom-and-pop business running, uh, speed limit observing, uh, is, vo- voting citizens do, uh, you, you're now not welcome in the state of New York now. I'm so glad that I am coming to you from New York because I am here to tell you uh, there are a few million people that disagree with Governor Andrew Cuomo. But there's a certain degree of of gutsiness that uh, I think he puts on display here that is not that is not particularly attractive. He's making an assumption that the people that are going to be listening to this interview are also of the same opinion that he is, which is. If you don't see it my way, then you must be wrong. But l- let me play you the soundbite again. This time I want you to notice just how much hubris and arrogance uh, it, 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 from the word choices that he uses. This is Governor Andrew Cuomo, Governor of New York. Uh, their problem is not me and the Democrats. Their problem is themselves. Who are they? Are they these extreme conservatives who are right to life? A pro-assault weapon, anti-gay, is that who they are? Because if that's who they are, and if they are the extreme conservatives, they have no place in the state of New York. So, so that- uh, just plain simple, uh, if, if you happen to have uh, uh, traditional values, and you happen to look at the world in a fairly traditional way, meaning that you value the sanctity of an unborn life, uh, that you believe in the uh, opportunity for someone to have the right to defend themselves, uh, if you if you believe in the sanctity of traditional marriage, then as governor, who should be the biggest ambassador for his state, saying, I'm not here to represent just one niche of people. Uh, we want everyone to visit our state. Here, here's a governor saying, no, if you're not that way, you're not welcomed here. Well, let me let me just blatantly disrespect the governor's comments uh he does not speak for new yorkers he does not speak for the majority of new yorkers so if you are pro-life if you are pro-family if you are pro-gun you are very much welcomed in new york state uh 888-589-8840 i don't know if you have a reaction to that or not but i I just thought it was ah pretty gutsy i i've never seen i've never seen a, a politically elected official just say everybody that's traditional in our in our entire constituency which by the way outnumber the crazies okay so traditionally uh, uh traditional worldview viewing people uh you're not welcome i'm only representing the nut jobs now 
I'm only representing those people that believe you should have your guns taken away. I'm only going to represent the people that believe that families should be anything other than the traditional construct of what it is. I'm only going to represent the interest of those that want to kill more innocent children. Is that what he's saying? It sounds like that's what he's saying to me. Am I misconstruing his words? Am I taking him out of context? Am I saying something he didn't say? Because that sounds an awful lot like what he said to me. Now, Dateline Chicago, and we're taking your calls, 888-589-8840. Dateline Chicago, and this is from onenewsnow.com. The Illinois right to life uh, is hopeful that a Chicago-area abortion clinic shut down by the state will continue to be prosecuted in spite of a slight setback. I think this was, um, who wrote this? This was Charlie Butts on uh, onenewsnow.com. But the women's aid clinic located on Chicago's north side was inspected for the first time in 15 years in 2011. Now, you know how we end up getting uh, a, a clinic uh, like we did with uh, Gosnell, where nobody had paid attention for a long time, and all of a sudden you had women uh, dying in the emergency room, and you ended up with jars of baby feet. Nobody inspected the clinic for a long, long time. So in 2011, the uh, women's aid clinic was inspected for the first time in 15 years. Emily Zender of the Illinois Right to Life uh, tells One News Now what they discovered was a horrific medical facility not even held to the same standard as a veterinarian's clinic. Where have we heard this before? Oh, yeah, that doctor down in Houston that uh, vehemently opposed that Texas law that said abortion clinics have to have the same uh, basic uh, medical standards and uh, the doctors have to have the same admitting rights as doctors that actually practice real medicine. Um. She said, what we are asking the Attorney General's office to do is to continue to prosecute this because the clinic was an emergency shutdown because it was such a disgusting clinic. It was in such uh, horrific turmoil and uh, was in such bad shape. She also reports that the clinic owner and a representative of the Attorney General's office made a court appearance over a fine of $36,000 that had gone unpaid. So they told the judge they have $77 in their bank account, says Zender, and the judge has said that $77 is okay to uh, pay the amount of $36,000 that they were fined. Uh, Actually, the abortion clinic was only closed for a short period of time, changed one word in the clinic name, closed out the old bank account, and opened a new one. It's now found online as Women's Aid Center instead of Women's Aid Clinic. Uh, There was an extensive story filed on LifeSite News, and it recalled that the Illinois Department of Health visited the clinic in September of 2011, just after the House of Horrors in Philadelphia, the the notorious Kermit Gosnell abortuary, was discovered. The $36,000 in fines were assessed weeks later, and weeks afterward, the owner, Lariska Rosansky, filed for bankruptcy in a case that was dismissed. The LifeSite News story points out that the Attorney General's office proved in a hearing that Rosansky was operating the same clinic under a different name and still collecting money while her attorney claimed there were only $77 in the bank account. Zender is hopeful that the Attorney General's office will take the situation seriously and pursue the case. So here, here you have, in one state, you've got one governor saying, if you're pro-life, don't even bother coming to our state. In the state of Illinois... You have someone who's basically, uh, you know, flaunting the fact that they uh, are getting around the law. And there doesn't seem to be a major outcry about it. Now, obviously, Illinois uh, Right to Life is hoping that there will be something done about it. But, friends, this is the this is the kind of boldness, the brashness with which the pro-abortion side of this discussion has adopted in recent years. Uh, one more story. Wendy Davis down in Texas, she's now in trouble. She was the one that was pushing back uh, against the Texas law as they were trying to pass it, and she was the one that wore the, the pink tennis shoes, and then everybody wanted to buy the pink tennis shoes, and now she's running for governor in Texas. And I think I think she's going to get crucified. I think she's going to get creamed. I, I, I don't think that they're I, – I think she's going to lose by 20% or more. But she's she's stumbled – in her uh, campaign performance recently because she's not been quite honest about some of her uh, dealings in her past.
But this is another case of those people that, that speak the way they – she thought she was the majority. And even though they had to bus in people from other states to just get the protesters to do what they did on the state lawn, the bill still passed. Why? Because Texas is overwhelmingly a pro-life state. Overwhelmingly. Here in Illinois, uh, the, the majority of citizens would still classify themselves as pro-life. Even here in New York, the overwhelming majority of voters would see themselves as pro-life people. In other words, people that found abortion morally wrong. Now, that doesn't explain how they vote for politicians that support the practice, but this is the personal worldview of the people that are there. But do you see how disconnected the leaders in each state are? Because the governor of New York saying what he said, the leadership in Chicago and in the entire state of Illinois uh, just as disconnected as, as Mr. Cuomo. And then down in Texas, the pro-life woman that's been made to be, you know, like the superstar, she's she's going to lose by a bazillion percent. And it's all going to be because none of these people really understand what the average person actually thinks, that innocent children should not be killed simply for mere convenience and choice. Kevin, that's an awfully harsh thing to say. Yeah, but it's true. The overwhelming majority of abortions are, are not performed to save the life of the mother or any other health or medical reason. The vast majority of abortions that are performed are performed so that the life of the mother doesn't uh, intake a, a detrimental quality to it. Now, they may try to attribute that to, like, mental health. Well, do you understand the strain I would be under if I had a child? Yes, uh, people have been having them since basically Adam and Eve, and we've understood that from the beginning as just what parenthood is con- consists of. 888-589-8840-888-589-8840. Uh, let's take some of your calls on some of this because I can tell that uh, many of you want to weigh in. Kathy is calling from North Carolina. Kathy, welcome. You're on with Kevin McCullough. So glad you're here. Hey, I just wanted to bring up the fact that uh, the governor's statement pales in comparison the statement the president made to the U.N. when he said, not just the state, he said the future does not belong to those who criticize the prophet. Remember that one? <laughs> yeah, I do remember that. Um, and, uh, the, yeah, that's a whole different conversation, but it, it is equally disturbing. Let's go, to, uh, let's go to Jack calling from West Virginia. Hey, Jack, welcome. You're on with Kevin McCullough. So glad you're here. Hello, Kevin. Uh, how are you, Jack? I'm um, doing well. Thanks for asking. I uh, just want to uh, weigh in on the government statement, uh, the governor's statements here. Sure. Uh, Governor Cuomo uh, said okay. that uh, if you're pro-life, pro-Second Amendment, or pro-family, you're not welcome in his state. And I'm just here to say that ain't true. A lot of us yeah. New Yorkers believe that uh, you are, you should be welcomed, and we will welcome you. Well, I agree. Um, my wife and I recently took a mission trip to New York, and we were there for a week. And, uh, of course, being from a very conservative state, you know, we, uh, we expected, uh, to find some opposition there. But quite frankly, just about everybody that we interacted with there in the state of New York was it just almost completely, um, they ate up the conservative view. I mean, it, it was, it was, you know, everything that we presented them and every discussion that we had was just, you know, they were just mystified that their 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 um their state wasn't perceived as being right. just like that. I mean, it, it was amazing to me. Every misconception I had a lot of misconceptions about the environment that I was going into, and it was actually very pleasant to both these people. Uh, I just want to say that this governor, I agree with you. I think he's very much out of touch with what his people actually think and feel well i'm, I'm glad that you uh, said that jack because it is it is easy for me to sit here every day in the uh, afa today studios and in the belly of the news beast kind of explain uh what my perception is it's another thing for you guys to come here and to uh and to see it and to experience it all together and by the way if you ever do if you ever are coming to the big city and you want to come in studio and you want to you want to be here, uh, feel free to be in touch. My email address is kmcradio at gmail.com. But uh, we, we, you, can, you can come in and, and uh, witness a broadcast. Uh, it's our, our pleasure to be able to bring that to you. Um, all right, so uh, 888-589-8840. Uh, the governor of New York saying that uh, pro-lifers, pro-family people, 
and uh, pro-Second Amendment people need not even uh, come to his state. Um, there's some more of you wanting to weigh in on that. Lewis is in Texas. Hi, Lewis. Welcome. Hey, Kevin. How you doing? Thank you. Um, sure thing. I, I don't know if I understood him correctly, but if I did, I'm not trying to defend him because I'm everything he said. I, I'm, I'm very conservative. I think he said the Republicans have a problem with themselves and then proceeded to describe who they might be. Now, what he may have been saying, and this is just giving him the benefit of the doubt, is that regarding politicians, those type of politicians have no business in New York. Although, what I don't understand is, if like your last caller said, uh, New York has a lot of uh, conservative people, why, are the, why is the vote turning out Democratic? And personally, I believe there's some kind of shenanigans involved. I believe in the last election there was something going on. I can't prove any of it, but uh, but I have my doubts. You wouldn't be the first that had that feeling, uh, Lewis. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna dispute you or uh, criticize you. I'm just gonna say uh, you're not the only one out there that has had that uh, observation or feelings uh, about uh, some of the recent elections. I had a friend that wrote a book not long ago said if it's uh, not close, they can't cheat. Boy, that's really true. That's why it's uh, up to uh, conscience-based people to get out and let their uh, thoughts be known on the issues of the day. Kevin McCullough, AFA Today, AFR Talk, thank you for being here. Coming right back.